Um, baloney. <laughs> well, Chris Williams, in your own words, school yes. wasn't really your thing. You no. left with enough qualifications to fill the back of a postage stamp. Almost, yeah. What did you want to do then as a sort of a teenager thinking about a, a long career? What, what was it you thought, that's what I want to be? My careers officer at school said, why don't you go and get a job in a, in a shop? And that's that's how highly they, they, they said, go and get a go and get a job in retail. That's you encouraging. Sh- you should be yes, you should be able to find a job in retail if you are lucky. You know, Mr. Williams, off you go. And I wanted to work. I mean, I was doing paper rounds at the age of twelve, thirteen, or whatever, because I wanted to earn me own money. So I went to work as a Saturday boy in Dixon's uh, on a Saturday, and then I uh, worked in the tailor shop for a couple of three or four years. Uh, um, so, my, uh, uh, yeah, it did all that kind of bespoke tailoring things with the chalk. Oh, I'm just going to make you the inside leg. Can you still um, alter your own trousers? <sighs> yeah, if you give me a needle and thread, yeah, if I could be bothered. Yeah, do all that. Uh, and then I worked in an independent record shop, which was just fab. And that was in the, you know, the, the height of the Frankie Goes to Hollywood's ATT thing with, uh, you know, Wham and uh, Boy George. And, and it was just great. Really, really, really thriving little independent shop. But I was, at that time, I was doing radio stuff anyway. And I knew I wanted to be, a, a, you know, work in the radio. But when I was very young, at sort of seven or eight, we had an old open reel tape recorder, one of those German ones, Telefunken, I think it was, with the big... Uh, and he had a microphone that had a little stand on it, a little brass front. And we used to tape the records off the top 40, like everybody did, and cut the speaking out. Everybody did it yeah, on Radio 1, you know. Take, yeah. you take, you cut the jocks out, because the DJs are rubbish, aren't they? <laughs> Who wants to be a DJ? <laughs> so you chomp those out and be your own DJ, wouldn't you? Superfish Disco. There you are. Did you have any uh, DJ idols? Was there anyone that you particularly enjoyed listening well, to Walker's when you weren't a, cutting them out? Johnny bit? Walker's a superstar. Yeah. And, and, and thankfully is. and luckily still is. Yeah. Roger Scott, I was um, a, a massive, avid fan of Roger Scott. Used to be on Capital and then went to Radio 1 after that and sadly passed away of cancer. But, uh, you know, Roger Scott was great. Johnny Walker, you know, he's just the best of what he does. Mm. And he does it very well and long living. Good, good stuff. Okay, we're going to take a, another little musical interlude Ooh. now. Um, this is the it's jam. Like the Potter's wheel, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the jam. Well, you see, I, I wrote on there once a mod, always a mod. Listen, were you a mod or a rocker or neither? Uh, neither. Beth. Uh, a modette. I'll I'd go probably with that. more be a mod than a rocker. I'll go yeah. With that. All right. Okay. Well, we'll do this. The jam. Went to see the jam for the first time in uh, 1979. And uh, the promoters were wise enough to put the jam on on one side of the bypass at uh, Bracknell Basketball Stadium, who was playing at uh, Bracknell uh, Hockey st- Stadium on the other side of the bypass. I'm going to say someone like Motley Crue or the something. The specials. No. So you had the, you had the mods on one side and the jam on, and, the, and the skinheads on the other. That was <gasps> hilarious. Whoever planned that one, nine out of ten. Brilliant. 